Okay, so this course is called Integral Calculus, and let's see what is the main idea in Integral Calculus. So if you remember differential calculus, we start with a function, say f of x, and we want to find its derivative, and this will give us a new function. So we have the function f of x, we differentiate with respect to x, so d over dx is the action of differentiating the function, and we obtain the derivative f prime of x. And all of differential calculus was, was studying the derivative, its properties as a transformation, and its applications. In integral calculus, we do the same thing but backwards. We start with the derivative of a function, and we want to go back to the original function before it was differentiated. So integration is the opposite of differentiation. And the symbol for integration is this long stretched out s. This may look strange for now, but very shortly this will make more sense. And in this course, integration, again the opposite of differentiation, we will do more or less two things. We will study the properties of this transformation, going from the derivative back to the original function, and we'll of course look at the applications. So all of integral calculus is, is differential calculus, but done backwards. And the notion of, anti the notion of integration is also sometimes called antiderivative. So let's look at this definition. And then we'll look at some examples to really see that what we're doing is we're going backwards. We have the derivative of the function, we want to go back to the original function. So f of x, uppercase f, is an antiderivative of the other function, lowercase f of x, if, quite simply, the derivative of uppercase f of x is equal to lowercase f of x. And the question we're going to look at in integral calculus is given the function f, can we find a function big F of x such that the derivative of uppercase f is the original function lowercase f, therefore going backwards with respect to differentiation. Let's look at some examples of this. You know, it's a very natural notion. So suppose that lowercase f is equal to 1. Can we find an antiderivative of 1? Well, again, we need a function whose derivative is the original function. Well, do we know a function whose derivative is 1? Well, clearly, x. The derivative of x is 1, and so x is an antiderivative of 1. What if f of x was equal to x? and we asked for an antiderivative of x. Well, again, we are looking for a function whose derivative is x. Well, you can think about this for a few seconds, but as you'll find out, it's just x squared over 2. If you differentiate x squared over 2, you obtain x. And so x squared over 2 is an antiderivative of x. Let's look at one more. What if f of x was cosine of x? And we ask for an antiderivative of cosine of x. Well, we are looking for a function whose derivative is cos of x. That is, of course, sine of x. As the derivative of sine of x is cos of x. And so again, in each case, uppercase f is an antiderivative of lowercase f as the derivative of uppercase f in each case was equal to the original function lowercase f of x. And that is the notion of antiderivative. What about now, if you look here, let's go back to this one. Is the antiderivative unique, right? If you take a function, 
and you find its derivative, given the function, the derivative is unique. Is it the same thing for an antiderivative? Well, let's just look at x. So given x, let's see if we can find some other antiderivatives. Well, x squared over 2 plus 1 is an antiderivative. The derivative of this function is equal to x, as the derivative of 1 is 0. Hmm, what if we added a different constant? x squared over 2 plus 5. This is still an antiderivative of x, as the derivative of x squared over 2 is x, plus the derivative of 5, which is 0. And you can see, we could say, well, uh, what about x squared over 2 minus the root of 5? This is a constant, the derivative is 0. And so, x squared over 2 minus root of pi is also an antiderivative of x. So these are all antiderivatives of x. As the derivative of every function is always equal to x, the question is, well, is this it? Right? We could say, well, if we add to x squared over 2 an arbitrary constant, as the derivative of any constant is equal to 0, then we'll have an antiderivative of x. So we have an infinite number of possible antiderivatives of x. So that's what we have right now. x squared over 2 plus c is an antiderivative of x for any constant c. So we have found an infinite number of antiderivatives of x. Differentiate x squared over 2 plus c with respect to x for any choice of constant c. The derivative is always x. The only question left is, is this it? Are all antiderivatives of x of the form x squared over 2 plus a constant? And the answer is yes. Before we prove this, let's see if we can look at this from a very intuitive point of view. The claim is, if you find one antiderivative of a function, in our case x squared over 2, all the other antiderivatives are just the one you found plus some constant. So let's see why intuitively this should make sense. So suppose you look at the graph of a function. any kind of function. And suppose this is one of your antiderivatives, so this is uppercase f of x, right? But if this is an antiderivative of lowercase f of x, then we know that the derivative of uppercase f must be lowercase f. But suppose we find another antiderivative, say uppercase g now of x, or f of x. This means that the derivative of our antiderivative is again f of x. So both uppercase f and uppercase g have the same derivative. And if you think of it graphically, the derivative, being the slope of the tangent line, gives you the shape of the graph. And the only way for two functions, uppercase f and uppercase g, to have the same derivative everywhere is if they have essentially the same shape. So the only way for g to be another antiderivative of lowercase f is to be simply a vertical translation of our initial antiderivative. So g of x must be f of x plus some constant. Of course, you could subtract something to f and have a function that is slightly lower, but still with the same shape. So this would be maybe f of x minus a constant. Of course, he could be positive or negative. But if you think of it geometrically, it looks like 
this makes sense. The only way to have a different antiderivative for the original function is by having a vertical translation. Therefore, by adding to the original antiderivative or subtracting some constant. Because if we have two antiderivatives, f and g, well, they have the same derivative, so they must have the same slope everywhere, so the graphs must be of the same shape everywhere. So this will be the topic of our next video. We will prove that we're right. That if we find one antiderivative of a given function, all the other antiderivatives are obtained from the one we found by adding an arbitrary constant.